You're listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author Sarah Box, where you get the inside scoop on the steps action takers and decision makers take to align their purpose to their principles and achieve their goals in business and life. We focus on the mantra, no labels, no limits, no excuses. Each week, you'll hear from remarkable guests who have overcome challenges and obstacles to succeed in the face of adversity. By listening to their stories, you'll get practical tips, tools, and resources you can implement today to bust through your own internalized prisons of worry and doubt. And now, without further ado, please welcome your commanding coach with plenty of chutzpah and heart, Sarah Box. Hey there, this is Sarah, your host of the No Labels, No Limits podcast. Thanks for joining us this week for another episode This is a podcast, as you know, all about shedding limiting labels and beliefs so that we can live our dreams, shine our lights in the world, and actually be more of who we were meant to be. You're going to love our guest today because she is all about that. We are going to be joined by Jamie Cook. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Jamie. I know her personally. I did not know all of the depth of Jamie until recently, which I was blown away. You know how you can have someone in your life and you're thinking, you know, I'm on one level and then you're going, oh, they do that and that and that. That's what I learned about Jamie. So, yeah. yeah. So Jamie has enjoyed more than 25 years as a financial (laughs) tax strategy advisor. I knew that. I knew she was a golfer. I did not know. Jamie, that you're a mediator, that you authored a book, you're a hypnotherapist, that you're a master practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming, and on top of that, a coach and consultant, and one of my favorites, a student. (laughs) Um, And I know, Jamie, that you say you know firsthand that it takes courage to break through money blocks and anxiety and business challenges, family dynamics, um, and working relationships. And that you've had your own breakthroughs over your life that really actually have led you to the success that you enjoy today, both personally and professionally. And, you know, listeners, it's all her years of experience and ongoing coaching and training that have led to the proven methods that she uses today to help those with the courage to transform their limiting beliefs, especially those around money. Um, And one of the things, Jamie, that I really liked when I was doing a little more research is that you do remind us we all have limiting beliefs and they're just part of the human experiment. I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit more about that. But folks, in addition to what I've just shared with you about her success, she is also the author of How Cookie Found a Home. And this is a fun children's book, which I read. Um, It's dedicated to her husband, her children, her grandchildren. Um, because that's the heart that Jamie comes from. And she's also a fun golfing partner. If you have the fortune to golf with Jamie, she you can tell right now, she keeps her sense of humor. She's actually a good golfer. So when she plays with lesser golfers like me, um, she's a good grounding source that says, keep your focus. You're a good golfer too, don't <laughs> I'm not that sell good. Sell yourself short. <laughs> no, I, I'm not that good, but I think my golf game, my score would be better on a bowling card, but I do have a lot of fun. I like being out in nature and and I like trying to get better all the time, which is kind of my goal in life. So Jamie, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. It's such a pleasure. It is a pleasure. It's fun to know you and get to visit with you in a different context and then to get to share you with folks. So I do like to ask my guests as a kickoff question, Is there something that you do daily, Jamie, that really helps you stay focused on your own goals and dreams? Yeah. yeah. Um, So one of the things that I do when I get up every day, you know, I love my cup of joe, uh, obviously, but uh, one of the things that I do every day is I meditate. And I am not a great meditator. It's hard to sit still sometimes for a long (laughs) period of time. But I feel like that you'll find a certain time of the day that you can just breathe and you just try to center, I deal with a lot of conflict with um, transforming conflict throughout the day. So for me to be real centered and clear uh, so that it's not about me, it's about my clients. And and it really helps me to do that. And so when I also meditate, I I look at, I have my own goals. So I'm a a big list maker. And I learned that from my husband, (laughs) who's very, very good at it. But I make my list. and I try to get through, you know, just learn to prioritize. And some of that comes from training 
um, just from years of being in uh, the financial planning and the strategy world, you just really have to look at the pros and cons of stuff. But as far as being centered every day, I get up and I like having a good hour to myself. And so sometimes I get up at the crack of dawn or before just so I can get that peace time. And then I go into go mode. And um, so I have my days broke, broken out, um, either administrative day, kind of shop, sharpening the saw, if you will, or just go where I'm constantly back-to-back -back meetings with clients. And then I have my fun days, which is golf. And then a new love that I think I'm going to really like is pickleball. Oh. So we'll have to talk about that sometime off camera. But yeah, that um, seems to be the thing, and it's good energy. So. I will pick so then anyway, then, on that. <laughs> I think anybody can learn. That's the good thing. You don't have to be super athletic. Um, okay. So anyway, that's one thing is the meditation. And then know, knowing who, what makes you happy, what fills you with energy instead of depleting you. So just getting that charged up for the day. So I think that's that's pretty much on a daily basis. It could be even on the weekends, I do that. So it's, it's every day. So Jamie, at the end of a work day, and you, you brought up that you do a lot of mediation and work around conflict. Um, how do you recenter or come back? So you start your day great, but then those are high energy. And I don't mean like high go, go, go energy, but they're high focus and um, emotional mental. energy. Yeah. Mental. Yeah. Emotional. How do you um, refill your cup at the end of the day? Yeah, so I don't wait till the end of the day. So um, when I'm having my my meetings or mental emotional release with clients or money coaching um, or mediation, there's a lot of emotion that people are feeling. It's hard to not be around conflict today, and so uh, you have to release that. So when you otherwise it gets stuck into a limiting belief or it fills you with um, anxiety. And so you don't want that to build up, you know, because you can put it under the rug and under the rug. Oh, at the end of the day, and then something else will happen. And you won't have a chance to release that. So um, I always schedule a little bit of time. It, 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 I'm so good at it now that it does maybe only takes me five minutes. Um, but I just take some breaths and I breathe in. <sighs> and I let that out. And I just send good energy to whoever I worked with. You know, that I, you know, hopefully and also for the next one that I have to come and see. So just releasing that um, allows me to be more clear. So at the end of the day, I'm tired mentally. So you could ask me what happened in the morning. I probably won't remember because so much has happened during the day. Um, and I do release on a regular basis. It's just something I learn to do. It keeps me healthy, keeps me uh, mentally strong. And I'm able to give 110% to the next person that I'm having a, a tough conversation with. Great. So talk a little bit about your background. How did you come to do this work? I mean, <laughs> you know, well, you think what I knew you uh, as, and you're very practical when you use the word strategy and strategic and finance, right? I'm thinking, yeah, that described you to a T. But what about the rest of it, the neurolinguistic work, the hypnotherapy, mediation? How did that mm -hmm. all get woven? Yeah, actually, it probably started when I was a teenager. I don't know if I shared the story with you, but uh, back in the day, back in the 80s, uh, 70s, I was a typesetter and I worked in a publishing house. And this is kind of pre-computers. So it was all done in code. So professors would write books for their, you know, their universities or someone just wanted to write a book. So I was the typesetter and I could just type really fast back then. And the first book I ever typed was a sex psychologist in Beverly Hills. And I sat on the manuscript. I was so afraid anybody would read it, but it was just so interesting. And then the second book was a revision of the book of Revelations. And I thought it was going to hell for reading the book. So I love, I love to read. I've always been an avid, avid reader. Um, so the psychology, and I, I just started going and asking the question is why, why is that like that? Who is, what's motivating? So it's always something that was, I have questions 
and more questions than I had answers. And so that's why I'm a student forever, you know, just because I don't think you're ever going to get the answers. But over time, you kind of figure out where your skill set is and trying to make a living. And we had moved from Southern California to Nevada. And um, I always wanted to be a stockbroker. And I think the first person, I mean, nobody wanted to hire it probably looked like I was 15 when I was <laughs> back then. So, I mean, they just didn't hire a lot of women. So I had to really hit the pavement and learn really the hard way. Didn't have a lot of mentors. Had to really learn, read a lot, learn a lot. And um, in financial planning back then, the first kind of books that you had to read was understanding body language and understanding, you know, how people feel about things. It wasn't the practical stuff. So the behavioral stuff was always there. But that's so interesting. Kind of an, I, I don't think you would guess that right tax planning. I would have thought part of it's the code, part of it's the, you know, finances. I wouldn't have thought about the psychology of it. Uh, yeah, but that was the first piece, right? Yeah. And then it was the other stuff. Then it became the numbers and it became, you know, if you do this and you know the algorithms and all of that. There's that side of it. So you really I really had a good um mix of both both things the uh, psychology thing always seemed a little woo wooly to me always a little a little bit out there but I just always was interested so it was kind of a secret read if you will <laughs> and uh, reads. I tell you yeah secret reads you know how is that going oh my god that's so interesting that perspective and that's kind of how it started and then even from my own uh, struggles in life and uh, conflict and challenges, how do I solve that? So it's about research and really kind of learning. And um, money coaching uh, came to me really after um, uh, the, the depression of 08 and people were losing their homes and their livelihoods. And, you know, it was it was grown men coming in crying. And so I go, I got to find a way to help people with the behavioral side of money because it was very reactive. Anytime you pick up, I mean, it's, it's not any better today. Anytime you pick up a magazine or see a headline or watch the news, it's negative in content typically. And um, you're reacting. And if you get so much of that, um, even on your phone, you get a pop-up and you hear something, um, it affects you. It affects you, and so it's being built up in you and being built up in you. And so mental emotional release was developed um, by um, a doctor, a psychologist. Uh, I mean, these guys are just so phenomenal. And uh, mental emotional release allows people to get to the root of the matter. Um, you hear that kind of word a lot lately but really getting to the core thing that needs to be released because when you can release that first thing the rest is like a domino and you can release it so i deal around the emotional the behavioral side and try to transform conflicts on a regular basis so um the money side was always something missing because um there's no i mean it didn't feel like a purpose, do you know? It didn't okay. feel like I was living my life purpose. And I did that for so many years. And I can do make sales and help people. But at the end of the day, I felt like it was um, not feeling me up. And so I finally had the courage, which I talked to you about the courage. And courage is the number one thing for my life. Um, that if you have the courage to take that step, the new doors will open and it isn't without struggle because you do always have to have a team behind you and you have to follow that purpose because that purpose is going to get brighter and brighter over time um emotions always have to be released so the highest emotion that we release is anger you can have different words for it sometimes it's uh disappointment um Wait, wait, but let me it ask is, you, the highest emotion, when you use the word highest, just so in my mind. It's, I see it's passionate. It's passionate. So it's, it's the like, heavy, oh, it's, it's energetic. Like, uh, yeah, it just kind of takes over. And so if you could say, yeah, I have a little bit of anxiety, it might be on the lower scale, you know, 
passion wise as where, opposed to when you're angry and you're like Rawr. angry you're, <laughs> yeah but that angry could even be subtle it doesn't not everybody shows their anger you know okay. you have to really but there could be something that you're really mad about that happened years ago maybe even back into childhood that's where it started and then you see these patterns that have continued to happen over and over. And you, well, why is this continuing to happen to me? And I'm angry about it. So we got to get to that piece and release it. And then, um, then the next, the next one down, um, you know, you get down to like, you get to sadness, you know, like sometimes something has happened and then all of a sudden you have sadness and sadness um it's like i'm so sad about it you know and you just got to be able to release that this is how you release yourself when dealing from one thing to the next right and there's a whole host of these emotions but i go for the tough ones first because then it are gets those better. Like, so if you bust through a couple of the tough ones do the others kind of are they easier to address um if you don't deal with the tougher one that's hidden it's going to keep coming back Okay. You just don't know that that's what that is. So, um, so anyway, we, I follow a process that does that. Um, and then the other thing is hip, hypnotherapy. So hypnotherapy can be a quick way to get to the root of the problem without really having to discuss details. You don't have to know all of that. Um, so it kind of depends on what the situation, what it calls, because you can find this, you can release it, but from that point on, we got a coach to success because patterns take time, habits take time to, you know, to create. So it's really kind of a big picture. Now I deal find that basically with money because that's my mo most um, experiences around money. Uh, but there's really the main areas you've got career and money, and I kind of put them together. So sometimes people just haven't found that yet, that career. They're wanting to make a career. Their sales are down or, you know, bottom line, they got to bring in revenue for their house so that, you know, their home so they can pay their bills that they don't have money anxiety, if, if you will. So it's kind of all connected. It also affects your health. So the other thing is really doing um, areas that really help you to be healthy. So you're healthy on the inside and you're healthy on the outside. Um, um, so that's, that's an area. It could be relationships. Um, and I break relationships really with in two areas. One is just overall relationships that could be friendships. It, it can be family, but it could be work relationships, but just relationships in general. Family's its own little thing. Um, because we don't always get to pick our family. And so we get triggered a lot around family. So that's that's a separate one. Um, so these are all different areas. So typically I'll only work in one, uh, one area at a time. And we have to com be completely clear on that before we can even move on to another area. Um, so that's, that's what I, I've been studying that stuff since, like I said, a teenager. And I finally had the courage to break free and and say yes let's let's get rid of that because you're you're much happier your family's much happier things are easier um the process isn't always easy because it's emotional you're releasing emotions um but you know some people have gone to one therapist after another therapist and they spend i know someone that spent literally 30 years in different therapies uh for couples coaching so one of the things that i do is money coaching couples it's all behavior because we all have different mirrors that we pattern after it's going to be my dad or my mom or both or grandmother or maybe my parents weren't close maybe it was a neighbor um that cooked me meals every day and i watched how she did things maybe that was a pattern that i developed but my spouse is going to have something completely different and in my situation, it really was very, very different. So um, I remember the first and the 15th of every month as a newly married person, we had lots of bills and a little bit amount of money. And so that 
conflict was there. So we were smart enough to learn how to manage that so it wasn't, um, you know, a negative conversation. And so that's what I do for couples too, is the couples and business, um, business owners, small business owners, because once you figure out your money type as a business owner, for you personally and in a couple, um, a major transformation can take place. So that's, that's, that's exciting. That's the re- reward. Yeah. And I was just thinking as you were describing that and about like our patterns, what we learned as, you know, and then thinking about also our inherent which may be your money type piece, but that piece of us that knows it's like our values, like what we think is important, whether they're truly important to us or we just adopted them from our role models, right? And so we're saying, no, it has to be this way. Um, so when you're working with couples, are you talking about the assumptions they make also about like why one way, not another way, you know? And I'm just thinking about typical no. conversations. Yeah, so money coaching, you know, really it takes a minimum of four sessions. So we get into a personal history, um, and then you see patterns. So there, all of a sudden, new things are opening up. Aha, uh-huh, aha. Uh-huh. And um, then you're understanding also why somebody else, because you may think you know this person that you're living with. I mean, and then all of a sudden, something out of left field just hits you, and it's like, I didn't. I didn't see that coming. So it's so the money types really play a big role in all of this. There's eight money types, and we all have a little bit of each piece. Um, but you know, there's the victim, the fool, the creative artist, the martyr, the warrior, the magician. I mean, there's just so much, and there's different pieces. So when we're doing the money coaching, you're really identifying this because there are three combi- a combination that you can create in your life in the way of doing things. And it's transformation again. It is a complete change of how you see someone, how you do something. Because, you know, I don't do anything wrong, right? <laughs> everything I do is just so no. perfect. Yeah, everything is just perfect. And I think I know everything. And then all of a sudden this thing, and then, you know, so we're human. But where we can go is we can see, ah, this is where I'm, this is where I'm, I'm not being open about. Yeah, not, I'm not opening this piece. So, you know, when you open stuff, you're also a little bit vulnerable, right? That's the courage piece is that, oh, I see how that came across. I see how, you know, that might have changed the conversation, so I learned so much from other people. One of the conversations, as you know, I do mediation. So a lot, right now we're doing a um, ton of landlord and tenants through COVID. Um, and there's just a lot of, a, you know, a lot going on there. A lot of illnesses um, because of the stress of COVID has caused depression. Um, there's been, you know, deaths and disabilities and, you know, on both sides because of everything that's coming at you. Um, And when you're doing mediation, you have to stay as a neutral. So I work as a neutral, non-bias at at all. And so when you're trying to listen to one side and, and you're trying to get them to open up a conversation. So sometimes it's about, sometimes it starts off like finger pointing which totally puts somebody's back up. And then all of a sudden we think we're never going to get there. And then all of a sudden there's an opening where it's like magic. And that's what what I enjoy. I enjoy the part that they get to find resolution because by by not coming to an agreement through mediation, it's certainly not mandatory. We encourage it because if you don't, find that then the jor the judge well <laughs> it's not always what you think it's going to be and then taking you know just responsibility to stay in communication because so much of it is um a lack of communication and thinking something's um the tin stoffel theory which is no such thing as the free lunch and they think it is so it's interesting the um and i did do mediation uh, employment mediation one time and i remember walking mm-hmm. in really defensive 
because first of all, I was not the best person for the company. I did not believe I was the best person, but I thought, well, maybe that'll play in my favor, right? Because I don't know. I, yes, I kept the records, but I'm not the ultimate. So, yeah. but the gal was so great. She just said, okay, this is, she told, she laid out what was going to happen. She asked some basic questions, um, but all of a sudden I could see it from the other person's perspective and they could see it from ours. And I can't, I don't even remember what, the solution was, but it was that whole part of the opening. Um, mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. but had she not been there, had we not communicated, it would have stayed. It wasn't totally, you know, like on the mat kind of contention, but it was time. It was tense, right? So everybody's in their corner and it's usually yeah. like you're saying you it's miscommunication or whatever. Um, because it wasn't illegal. It was really more a thing of misunderstanding and blah, blah, blah. But I do remember thinking at that time, like she seems so calm and like, like, and I'm going right behind us is going to be other people. So that's why I asked what you, you do. I'm going a whole day of that. That could really suck oh, the life I, out of I you. Believe me, there has been situations where I tear up. I just think something that was just so, you know, sad uh, um or it got to that it got to this point but yeah the yeah. heartfelt on both sides yep. i mean it it is um it is it is something and you just kind of take it take like i said you got to breathe with it you know you know the cool thing is i got this apple phone and it has a thing on breathe this take a take your so i set that thing up it just reminds me also just let it out uh and just like just be able to listen, just open the ears and hear people and they will tell you things. And um, then they're able to release by having someone to talk to. So, well, you create the safe space for it. I yeah. do have one more of, of your methodologies that you're listed, you listed because I really like to understand how they get woven in. So what do you do with the neurolinguistic work? Well, neurolinguistics, um, there is um, many, many tools within neurolinguistics that allow you to break a pattern. So, uh, for instance, I mean, this is just a fun thing, but uh, like, let's say somebody wants to, um, well, for me, I love Ruffles potato chips and dip. <laughs> <laughs> on football day so I was like I want to not like that so much because sometimes I eat too much so I had to associate it with something that I really don't like at all and I just had to create that that just makes me want to gag when I think about it so I used what they call a sw switch pattern on that uh for myself and um I don't need to well, well I'll tell you it's sauerkraut I just cannot do sauerkraut so I just imagine I just had to do a switch. I switched it. It went from kind of a color view, like my potato chips. I can be discreet. I can tell you the crunch, the and to the same with sauerkraut. So I just kind of flipped it. Neurally, so you reprogram your brain to do the things that you want. Like people always say, I want to quit smoking, but do you really want to quit smoking? Because you know there's ways that you can make um like i went to a hit and i smoked when i was i think it was like 18 or whatever i smoked and i didn't want to smoke and i went to it like well i'm gonna try this hypnotherapy thing and then i just thought it was weird and i was so afraid of it i go i can't be hypnotized right um so i had some some stuff around that but it, you know if you really want you have to re maybe replace it with a new habit yeah so so I learned under Marissa Peer, she's a phenomenal hypnotherapist, world known, um, and she uses rapid transformational methods. And so I use, use that um, uh, for many people that just want kind of a short thing, but it's a 21 day program because you're creating a new habit. habit. So weight loss is one that people kind of want to do, um, but more it's health or it's um financial in nature getting rid of the panic or you know they want something really bad and it's elusive it's elusive so why is it elusive so we just try to you know change that and then things start happening so so they are required to do um commit to 21 days so i prepare a um 
a recording and they listen to it at least once a day. So then it's oh, you, magic you have starts a ton to happen. Of tools. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the thing is, but you never know what's going to be the right thing for someone. So, um, you know, what they've done in the past, what's worked, what hasn't worked. You know, most of the time I'm not the first person they've come to see in that, you know. But, uh, I, you know, I don't, I was always trying to figure out what's the best words for this because when it comes to money, usually you are getting into the plat. Um, you mentioned values right yeah. earlier so values if you don't have your goals in line with your values it's very you're going to be like uh it's anticlimactic right you're not living so uh, it and i've done goals my whole life it's just like okay here here here's the warrior i'm gonna go do this but the value piece was missing in some of the career stuff right um and so values i take people through a little light a light meditation if you will to get clear and really go through that i don't know if you've ever ever done that but um it's not you're not just making a goal like like i want to find a man or I want to find a woman or I want to be happy or I want to find love. Um, I want to be rich. I want, you know, people say all these things, but what is it that makes you sing? What makes you? And so that's where it comes down to values. Like my family is a high value for me. So if it's going to take time from my family, time away from my family, then I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to fall through. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll bail on it like first chance I get, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the word commitment's a big one. So if you're committed, if you commit to even a time, a commit to doing something, to me that is your integrity. And so that's another value for me. But people have different ones. Um, some but people. it's good to know your own values because sometimes yeah. we want to adopt others, you know, and I think about it like companies or organ we these are our values. And I've gotten to the point like when people said we need value statements, I said, then let's make sure they're ones you want to live up to. Right. Tell me what they yeah. look like. You know Tell me what they look like. Like it's if I had to evaluate you on a job performance, what would integrity look like? Right. It sounds great to have these lofty names that I'm thinking. What's the point? I mean, I don't say it in these harsher words, but basically I'm saying, what's the point of that value? Just so an external person says, Sarah is a good person, or they say, I can count on Sarah because these are her, we know, right? Or my yeah. organization or whatever, but it does take some thought. Um, yeah, it does. Yeah, I had, I had one, Sarah, that I remember that the high value was her teeth. And I had a hard time connecting with, well, what, what's the team? <laughs> That's not a value. But, but for her, it was because she couldn't smile. She didn't want to connect with people because she needed to have some work done on her teeth that she felt good about it. Um, so to her, that was like, you know, she didn't have that, then if nothing's going to happen. So, okay, we got to get this done. Yeah. That's all we got to do. Yeah. But how yeah, powerful so, to know that instead of just putting stuff on top and saying, okay, what's your goal? What do you want to do? And it's yeah. like, but that's not really what that person really yeah. wants and desires. So, yeah. Well, yeah. We deal with money and people go shopping. And now it's so easy with Amazon and the online shopping that you can get, you know, get really addicted, you know, instead of just buying one thing off. HSN or QVC buy in every color, you know. <laughs> just as a backup. Just, just buy it all. Yeah. So, and then the credit cards go up. And so that's a behavioral thing. So um, sometimes those can be tougher to to work through. But because especially if they're a... packaged with stress or, you know, like yeah. if it's packaged with a reactive behavior or yeah. soothing, right? Like, yeah. I just, because you don't yeah. always connect those two things. Yeah, yeah. 
or well, we all have shadows, right? We all have shadows. We certainly so do. We do. We have shadows. And so that's also part of the archetypes, what I call the, in the money type quiz. So I hope people get a chance to do that. We'll talk a little to, bit about that and where people can find the quiz, Jamie, because I think that would be great. Yeah, they can find it in a couple of places, but go to coachingmoneymatters.com. You can Google it, um, moneycoaching.com. And it says, take the money type quiz. So you can just do kind of a quick one and just see where your patterns are. So when you take the test, think about money, because obviously we're talking about money. Um, but sometimes you'll be looking at it and something else might get triggered. But if it feels right for you, then just click on it. And then we coach and then they can be changed. They can change, you know, a little bit. So sometimes I'll do one if I'm doing coaching, I'm going to do it again. After I do a little bit of coaching, then I'll have them take it again. Um, but yeah, they, um, that's that's deep stuff right there. But just just knowing about it, say I'm going to read more. So uh, Deborah Price, she owns the Money Coaching Institute. And I think it was 2011. I started working with her, and her organization, and she created the Money Type uh, Institute. And I'll, you'll see a lot of funny. I don't do financial planning anymore. I don't do any investment planning. I'm retired from from that. Um, and I'm just hundred percent doing behavioral work. So sometimes money shows up in different ways, um, through mediation, obviously. Sure. <laughs> Money's a big part of mediation. Money's a big trigger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. So as we're wrapping this up, I do want you to talk a little bit about your book, um, because it's super sweet and yeah. It is super sweet. And folks listening, um, we'll have information of this. And I'll put links in for Jamie's website and the quiz and all of that for you. But her book is called How Cookie Found a Home. So will you just tell us a little bit about it? Because I yeah. read it and I'm, you know, I'm reading. I'm, I'm so book. sucked That's into the, the story. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Sweet. So actually, it's, it's a bit of a true story. Um, it's about a cat and cat that her name is Cookie. So that's my last name is Cook. We call, you know, Cookie's kind of a nickname. And um, so uh, Cookie was um, my daughter's relative's uh, cat. And um, uh, she's a Siamese, Taiwanese. She's just a beautiful stunning cat and she's got a lot of personality but she was in a home and you know where they have a lot of kids and new babies and this one was active <laughs> she was very inquisitive as cats are I never had a cat I always thought I was allergic so anyway um my daughter and her husband showed up with the kitty and we weren't ready at one time we said no don't be pushing that on us we're not ready I'm allergic blah 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 but um, anyway, the, this, this is a true, a true story with a little fiction. And it's really about, you know, you are enough. You know, like sometimes people may think, well, why aren't I enough? What's wrong with me? I'm not like other people. Well, why can't I find a home? So this is the story. And she goes through a lot of um, adversity. And that's why there's some a little emotion in there, but there's really three parts, the beginning, the middle, and the end. And the end is when Cookie finally comes to my home. And I'm just in love with this cat. And I'm not allergic. <laughs> I thought I was. I'm not allergic. We can do something with hypnotherapy if you're allergic to cats. And um, but anyway, I just kind of um I was having grandkids and this was just such a, a fun story. Um, that I just felt compelled to put it in a children's book. So it's reading age, um, but certainly younger kids can um, be, have it read to them, but they're going to have a short attention span. So that's why it's broken out in three areas. So it starts off kind of rhymy, youngy, and then it gets more real, you know, gets a little bit older conversations. And then um, she also, uh, the cat learns to really, she's looking out a window and she's seeing the, fall leaves and she's creating a vision of what she wants and so that's kind of um what I do anyway so I kind of put a little bit of my spark in there and then uh she created you know what she wanted and it came true 
Well, so there you go. <laughs> it's a beautiful story. I could yeah. I could see a bit of you in there, Jamie. Um, yeah. The illustrations are beautiful. Yes, there is a young man. He actually is a tattoo artist, young man in Oakland, California, and he put he put to life the story through the illustrations. So William Bonanno. So if anybody is interested in that, you can certainly Google how Cookie found a home and um, you'll see a couple links. One is to Amazon, but if you go to store.babybook.com, that'll show up as well. Just click on that link and we're able to donate some proceeds to the SBCA or foster care, you know, instead of giving it all to, you know, Bezos <laughs> can go someplace else. <laughs> that would be my preference, but yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's a fun book. And you know, with the holidays and gift giving coming up, you know, it's just yeah. such a sweet gift. It's so sweet. Yeah. And I feel because I've got an autograph copy, so I, I'm keeping mine, but um, I'll be happy to sign. <laughs> you know, right. COVID hit, so I would love to be in, um, you know, local schools or, you know, different events. But with COVID, it would mean it a little bit different. Um, for that, but hopefully we'll be coming out of that soon. So I'm happy to sign your copy. Just let me know. You can reach me through coachingmoneymatters.com or jamiecook.com, either one. And again, we'll have those links in the show notes for you. Jamie, thank you so much for being a guest on yeah, the Yeah, thank you. Moments. It's going to be yeah, a few months you. before the golf, we'll be golfing again since, since things well, are- I'm going to call you for pickleball. <laughs> oh, do call me. I'm, it's so, that would it's be only fun. like an hour, hour and a half of good exercise. So. I'm, I'm in. Yeah. Totally All in. All right. Sounds good. All right. Happy Thanks, Halloween. Jamie. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. You've been listening to the No Labels, No Limits podcast with best-selling author, change agent, and strategic vision coach, Sarah Box. You can grab the show notes and find out how to work with Sarah at sarahbox.com forward slash no labels, no limits podcast. We'd love this podcast to reach as many people as possible. So please remember to rate, leave a five-star review and share the podcast with someone you think would get value from this conversation. Until next time, keep taking those daily action steps to align your purpose to your principles and achieve your goals in business and life.